Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. CNBC TV 18, Adobe present Experience Makers. Hello and welcome to Adobe Experience Makers brought to you by CNBC TV 18. I'm Parumita Chatterjee. On the show today, our spotlight will be on reimagining real time customer experience. Because in today's competitive business landscape, where companies are offering identical products or services, what will make a brand stand out for a customer in terms of a differentiated and yet customized experience? This is what is forcing businesses to rethink their businesses in terms of uh, the processes that they are following, because customers have more power than ever in terms of how they acquire products, services in this digitally connected world. Traditional methods of engaging with customers are almost becoming obsolete as customers are demanding a seamless, consistent and real time experience across channels. In the show today, we'll be exploring how enterprises can reimagine this real time customer experience, which can drive loyalty, increase sales and boost overall business performance. To discuss all that and more, we have with us uh, today on the show, Rahul Talwar, who is the Chief Marketing Officer at Max Life Insurance, and Sridhar Narayan, Head BFSI Adobe. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Rahul, let me start with you. Uh, share with us the key tenets in terms of really what comprises real-time customer experience uh, in today's digital world. Uh, so thanks, Paramita, uh, and a warm welcome to uh, Sridhar as well uh, to this uh, conversation. So I think interesting question. Uh, I'll straight away jump into it. Uh, I think consumers uh, or customers uh, within the life insurance space uh, have largely been uh, uh, living through two parts. Uh, one, uh, a fairly passive experience uh, that they've seen in the past uh, to today's heightened personalized uh, experience that's, that's on offer. Uh, and second, overexposure of many other categories, uh, which is also uh, making our category respond uh, in, in various interesting ways. Uh, at Max Life Insurance, uh, Paramita, fundamentally, uh, we, we follow uh, two philosophies. One, uh, an always-on approach uh, when it comes to uh, our customers uh, to be able to ensure that we're tapping into the omni-channel experience uh, that we have. Uh, and uh, more importantly, uh, being able to use uh, digitization or digital as an enabler. Uh, enabler in journeys, enabler in experiences, uh, enabler in being able to uh, drive the end outcome, uh, which is uh, customer satisfaction or customer happiness, uh, whichever way we were to define it. Uh, core to our communication uh, for, for this particular objective, uh, we ensure that uh, we, we keep a, a fairly positive tone to communication uh, because we have understood the fact that life insurance uh, over time has uh, has dropped the entire halo of being a fearsome product uh, and, and there is more positivity around life insurance. And interestingly, uh, with the new kind of customers who are coming into the fold, uh, thanks to the entire uh, millennial phenomenon, uh, which is at the heart of this category, and uh, the fact that even Gen Zs today are, are coming in a fresh uh, into the life insurance space, uh, we fundamentally believe that making life insurance cool uh, is, is, is an important need uh, today. Uh, so bringing okay. all of this together, I think an always on approach uh, for our customers, whether it's in communication or experiences, uh, sits at the center of it. Indeed. And as you said, really bringing in that tone of uh, positivity while while ensuring that the communication is really keeping, uh, you know, keeping it real time and keeping it in sync with what the customer wants. So. Shreedha, you know, take it forward for us from here because, you know, how does one really, how does a brand, for instance, provide these kind of differentiated experiences while also keeping pace with what the customer wants and uh, really providing the kind of content which uh, the customer seeks without becoming obsolete? Yeah, thanks, Paramita, for having me here. Uh, thanks, Rahul, for some really good insights about uh, Max India. So, uh, if you look at it, Paramita, we are in a next level of the information age. We are at an age where I truly personally believe we are in a customer era, where today brands are putting customer right in the middle and imagining the experience around the customer, right? Now, in this era, the critical aspect is over a period of time, people have developed siloed applications, which served their purpose at that point in time, right? But today, if you're going ahead and imagining the entire experience by putting the customer right in the middle, customer experience layer becomes one core aspect. The best way to 
enable customer experience layer is to see to it that this layer has all the interactions from various systems coming in together so that that becomes one layer of interaction to your clients today. That's the first aspect. Second most important aspect is how do you nurture this experience layer and grow it based on your business needs as they evolve, right? There are three things that we look at it from Adobe perspective. One is to look at how data helps rich insights about what customer is telling you, right? That will keep you in tune with the evolution. Second one is the kind of personalization that you could do based on the content, based on the data, as well as how all of these things come live in front of the customer in the nature at which he wants. Rahul spoke about millennials, right? Today, millennials are telling us a lot of things that know me, serve me, right? I'm willing to share the data about myself today, but I would desire an experience that I wish to have it, right? There is no compromise on that particular experience for brands today. The third most important aspect is where is the client at the particular juncture of the customer journey and how to go ahead and personalize using the data, right? If you're able to, brands are able to keep tune of these three aspects, knowing the customer better through data, what is it that I've got to personalize? Where on the journey are the inflection points that I have got to help nudge the customer? I think this will evolve in itself over a period of time. So coming to you now, Rahul, and to take Sridhar's point forward, at what point in that customer experience journey would you say you find yourself in currently? And how are you really prioritizing uh, in terms of the goals and what you want to deliver? Because you can't uh, give the customer everything that he or she wants or expects. Uh, well, uh, I think, again, uh, just to reiterate the point and picking up from what Sridhar mentioned, uh, uh, since we're keeping the customer at the center of uh, pieces uh, in terms of this entire journey spectrum that we have, I think fundamentally what we have understood uh, from the customer is that the customer in the life insurance space uh, is looking for convenience and is also looking for a lot of do-it-yourself experiences as uh, he or she goes along. Uh, and this, by the way, we have seen across uh, various demographics uh, of our of our customer profiles. Uh, so fundamentally, uh, picking up uh, a lot of data insights uh, that come from the world of customers and customer listening, uh, we have been able to apply this uh, sharp filter of prioritization that as to in the entire customer journey and the customer life cycle, knowing that our kind of a product and category is in for the long term, uh, we are in a relationship uh, with our customers anywhere from five years to 25 years to 40 years, depending when the customer is entering Max Life Insurance. Uh, we've been able to ensure that we digitize those touch points. Uh, we are also able to ensure uh, uh, very, uh, very quickly, uh, Paramita, that uh, the, the principles of A-B testing on uh, being able to apply on specific either customer segments or customer cohorts, uh, trying to have different kinds of behaviors. We are able to also ar uh, arrive at a sweet spot as to what works best uh, for our customers. Uh, and uh, our larger learnings from the direct to customer business uh, that we have, which is the space of e-commerce, uh, has also ensured that we have found the sweet spot of this category, which traditionally was B2B uh, to now being B2B to C. So I think the confluence of these three things has been able to just give us the right prioritization filter of what gets choiced in for our customers at Max Life Insurance and, and what could stay out for the time being while everything is important. Can I ask you a little bit about sharing some examples, perhaps a memorable campaign? I mean, uh, for instance, we all remember the You Are The Difference campaign that uh, that was run by Max. Um, you know, can you share with us some examples where all of these elements sort of came together, giving rise to this kind of an effective campaign that really worked in terms of connecting with the customer? Uh, well, well, thanks, Paramita, for the question and and, and bringing it on on Max Life's uh, You Are the Difference platform. Uh, so, so maybe just uh, ten seconds on what You Are the Difference uh, stands for. It stands for celebrating the breadwinner. Uh, we have realized for the longest time that uh, the life insurance space has had. Uh, a male-dominated uh, hangover uh, when it comes to the breadwinner. Uh, so A, we have tried to universalize the definition of the breadwinner and trying to bring in the larger cohorts. Again, looking at uh, the female participation in uh, financial planning, uh, becoming a very active conversation across households and, and across geographies. Uh, so, so within the You Are The Difference platform, Paramita, what we've done uh, very recently on, on points that uh, Sridhar spoke about, in trying to ideally uh, find the sweet spot between the product, uh, between the consumer or customer insight and the experience. 
uh, is where we rolled out this entire campaign of bringing in the homemakers uh, and uh, to be able to ensure that uh, within the max life insurance portfolio uh, and in the larger space we happen to be the first brand to offer term insurance to homemakers uh, without asking for income proofs uh, of the male breadwinner and this is about term insurance uh, and and we brought these pieces together uh, we we looked at communication we we celebrated the 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 women uh, breadwinner Uh, we also looked at the entire product experience and the buying experience that how seamless can it be and to be able to ensure that we take this conversation down within our uh, b2b uh, selling system and to our direct customers is where we were able to carry this entire experience forward again one of those examples where max life insurances progressive thought process on trying to be more inclusive on trying to be ensure that we are able to find those specific niches in the larger life insurance space to be able to build out our leadership and our thought leadership uh, and obviously mm. there is a cross functional hangover that that's always around to be able to deliver this kind of an experience uh, to the end uh, consumer or customer in this case being the homemaker indeed it was a very empowering i mean speaking as a woman and a very powerful uh, campaign but uh, tell me uh, you know in terms of the data insights i mean when it came to the actual genesis of this campaign um or even broadly speaking uh, how do you really go about culling those kind of data insights because while data is referred to as uh, you know the new oil but there's so much of it and many companies are sort of slipping a little bit uh, on this data deluge so to speak uh so again fundamentally what we looked upon we looked upon uh, three uh, data from three points of views one Uh, Max Life runs this entire thought leader platform uh, across a credible research ecosystem to be able to understand what are those insights coming in from various cohorts. Uh, that's the India Protection Quotient uh, and the India Retirement Study that we run with our partners in Kanthar. So that gave us interesting insights as to what uh, this cohort called homemakers is is looking for, and 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 what are the barriers or triggers for them to participate in financial planning. Second. uh because this a category has been around for the longest while and max life over the last 22 years has been having a very credible growth across various cohorts we were able to pick up a lot of insights from those uh customers uh, who were participating in this category maybe as a family as a household to be able to understand what are those unlocks required uh, for them to be able to have the right kind of life insurance and and third uh, most importantly this entire piece of looking at analytics and a lot of insights from the larger ecosystem that we have and 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 partners uh which are there uh, which are able to guide us that as to what this wholesome experience for say a campaign like the homemakers needs to be so again to be able to triangulate all these pieces together uh to be able to offer the right customized and personalized solution uh to our cohorts of homemakers Indeed, and Chidar, uh, you know, really fascinating the way they've used analytics. In this case, Max has used uh, analytics, and uh, again, you know, that's a challenge point. And many companies are asking themselves, particularly in this uh, segment, about really how much should they invest? Which are those right technologies? Because they have legacy systems, and there are new technology solutions coming up by the hour, almost by the minute. Uh, you know, what should be a, a clear strategy in terms of investments in technology to really? uh deliver these kind of optimum uh, customer experiences yeah first of all rahul brilliant campaign on your the difference it sort of echoes very well across what you wish to do especially on life insurance where our coverage is at 3% in india right so pravita to just to elaborate a little bit on that there are new terms which are evolving within the cx right one is pertinent to data is data democracy when we mean to say data democracy how organizations are looking at the same lens throughout right for example everybody should look at the same set of reports there's nothing should that should happen manually right the report should be pulled out of the system and everybody should look at the same data that will help in reducing the number of outliers when people look at the same data the decision making is a lot more easier for example just to take a example of your the difference campaign if we had certain number of visitors coming in into max india portal at some point in time right all of them should look at the right data and look at what kind of messages that the customer is giving and what sort of actions i can take right that's sort of helps in reducing data silos but now coming to your question there's absolutely no one answer or one size fits all in terms of customer experience or the transformation that we are going through broadly what we have seen is organizations want to look at evolving into 
let me start with the data strategy piece. Let me start with my content strategy, right? Let me go ahead and build customer journeys or let me go ahead and do personalization at scale, right? Now technologies coexist and work together. So the investments, what organization could do is closely bound based on what they want to achieve in near time and what they want to achieve in the longer term. Near term, when we would say is one to three years and long term is beyond three years, what's the kind of outcomes that they wish to measure? But we as uh, Adobe always advise to the customers, no matter what investment you start from, be very clear about what you want to measure, how you want to measure and nurture so that it gives you the right outcomes, right? That sort of lays a very strong foundation to the organizations. When we know what to measure from digital and how exactly I'm going to measure all hands on the deck to look at the reports in the right format. And how am I going to keep nurturing this over a period of time so that it continues to aid my business? So Rahul, getting back to your journey and uh, clearly uh, Max Life Insurance has been doing a lot of things right and it is a learning for other companies as well. But having said that, um, I mean, looking at the BFSI space and you find yourself there within it, I mean, there are some privacy norms. There is only so much in terms of, you know, where the envelope can be pushed in terms of getting to know the customer and real time in this case as well. Um, you know, how do you see your uh, company really shaping the future for yourself, whether it is in terms of utilizing analytics, uh, perhaps leaning back more into the B2C space? Uh, how do you see your journey from here on keeping some of the concerns in mind as well? Uh, so, uh, thanks, Paramita, for the question. Uh, so, so, at MaxLife Insurance, our, our fundamental approach uh, that, that I've been reiterating through this entire session, if I was to sum it up maybe in, say, a marketing uh, language, uh, in one line, it's going to be, uh, we want to just ensure that we move from why life insurance to wow life insurance for our customers. So, I think so that that's at a, at a headline level. Uh, obviously, respecting the fact that we have customers with us and across various touch points. There are various kinds of data points that the customer is, is leaving behind for us. I think safeguarding our entire customer's data is one of our primary responsibilities. And at Max Life Insurance, I would say that we have we have a matter of pride uh, that we've got the right uh, filters at play uh, to be able to ensure that whatever data is shared with us by our customers, uh, it's a uh, captured in meaningful formats, more importantly, and there are sufficient amount of security firewalls which are at play uh, to ensure that we, we, we follow the entire privacy norms that are there in the category. That's the second point. And third, more importantly, I think picking up from two threads that Sridhar spoke about earlier, I think data democracy and the entire frame of internal silos within organizations. I think from a customer frame, you're looking at a seamless journey. So the idea is that across this entire organizational flow, which may be structured functionally, the customer needs to navigate as seamlessly as possible. So MaxLife Insurance tries and efficiently works on this entire piece of making this entire omni-channel experience for our customers as seamless as possible. And uh, through a lot of customer listening forums, uh, for example, the entire piece around Net Promoter Score and the likes, we're able to pick up interesting voices of customers, whether our promoters or whether more opportunity areas that we may get from our passives or maybe in few cases from our detractors to be able to make this entire journey uh, a, a, a lot efficient. And obviously, nothing gets completed without the icing on the top, which is social media, which happens to be today the biggest gateway of being able to listen to our customers. So, uh, Shida, uh, then, you know, I have to ask you in terms of, uh, you know, hearing from uh, brands uh, such as uh, the one that Rahul uh, represents, clearly they've been at the forefront in terms of really leapfrogging and utilizing uh, uh, the kind of solutions and platforms which are av available today effectively to learn and really deliver to their customer. But what does the future look like, Shida, from here on? particularly for the BFSI segment, what are those uh, key trends which are emerging that companies need to capitalize on and build on starting today? Yep. So great. Why insurance to wow insurance? That's a good one, Rahul. So brilliant uh, campaign, another one. So coming back, um, Paramita, see, if you look at it, the BFSI segment, I think um, we are in a dream time of our lives, I would say, with respect to so many wonderful things the government is doing with regard to India stack, how the ecosystem is coming together 
to serve a customer extremely well, right? And it, it's great to see that there are a lot of uh, good work happening around such a regulated industry, right? So now, how do you leverage as a banking client in order to deliver superior experience, cross-sell, upsell? The challenges that the organizations face, we spoke about them much more in detail, but how does the future look like? In my view, the future looks like in a couple of areas, to keep it very simple, right? Data is going to be the king. As you rightly said, data is going to be the new oil, right? But how much do I know about my customer will help me look at, pivot into newer businesses or what services can I offer, right? To take an example here, let's say a product company traditionally used to sell a product. Now, there are product companies which have gone ahead and innovated and said, hey, a customer buys an X product from me. I want to understand what is he doing with this product over the next five years, 10 years, across the lifetime of the product. He's going to be consuming some of the services. Can I be part of those services? Can I offer those services? Can I expand myself into a service portfolio where I become a product plus services? This is the same with a service oriented organization. An organization today which is offering a particular service to a customer, as they understand more and more about the customer, they probably can come up with evolving product needs as well to those customers. So these silos are getting merged between a product and a service slowly with some of the organizations. May not be true with life insurance, but with the other traditional organizations who used to manufacture product or who used to offer services. Now, what is it heading towards? The future is heading towards that the fact that when I know more about my customer, a lot about my customer, what is he doing, going to do with my product? How does the future look like? And taking an example of our Indian startup ecosystem that finding a problem and solving it. If the customer is finding some issue, can I solve it with a little bit of a service? Is what enhances. And today, Thanks to the entire e-commerce world, the customer is willing to pay that extra bit of a service charge for his convenience. COVID has taught us one more thing, which is convenience. We are willing to pay for our convenience, right? So organizations understanding the data, pivot into various businesses, whether your product or vice versa, and look at offering a better service, charging a convenience fee or whatever that could be is a new area of business. So knowing your customer becomes very critical. The second aspect of Paramita is solving tomorrow's experience today. Can I go ahead and understand what, where will the customer be five years from now, 10 years from now? What challenges would he be facing or what can I solve for him today? Can I fast forward and bring that a little bit more in advance so that I'm able to offer tomorrow's experience today to the customer? Are right. two things I would say will define the future for us in the area of customer experience. Okay, final word uh, from you, Rahul. You mentioned social media. I mean, what do you predict as being really your future channel choices um you know there was a lot of anticipation about the metaverse i was speaking to somebody else in the insurance space uh, in a similar space which is you're saying listen it'll always be physical which will dominate uh, as opposed to just uh, uh, pure play digital uh, and he believes those choices may also limit uh, you know some of those um, uh, avenues that they choose to invest in for the future what are you betting on as a brand so I think I'll I'll I'll, I'll keep it uh, sharp to maybe three things, uh, Paramita. Uh, one, uh, like you rightly said uh, through your earlier conversations, uh, uh, I think this category would always have a flavor of uh, physicality of human touch, and and that's because physicality of human touch is embodied in the trust, which is the underpinning point of this category because of the kind of customer life cycle times that we have. A policy contract may start from five years and go. To upwards of 25 years, 40 years if you start young. So I think that that uh, fact is going to stay with us. Uh, the only question is going to be, how do you balance out the entire flavor of physicality of human touch, yet be able to offer an omni-channel experience to our customers and, and, and hence be able to respect the digitization that happens A, from the customer side, and like Sridhar mentioned earlier, to be able to take the customer in that direction in an enabling way. So, so, so that's the second point. Uh, and, and third, uh, most important, I think uh, thanks to the pandemic, thanks to the times that we are in and the multi-category view uh, that we have always uh, seen in terms of various products and services that our customers are consuming, uh, we need to be able to ensure that we are authentic when it comes to an always-on approach for our customers. And, and authenticity is something that really pays off in a subtle, yet in a very important way. So I think that's the sum total of the way we see. Obviously, in terms of uh, uh, how much physical to how much digital when it comes to our communications engine, 
or our deployments. I think there'll always be a very fine balance. Uh, but the idea is to be there where the customer is and to be able to be nimble footed to move in that direction as fast as possible. Thank you so much, Rahul and uh, Sridhar, for joining us and sharing with us, uh, more importantly, the roadmap and the key tenets to follow when it comes to developing and delivering on the kind of real-time customer experience which is required in today's competitive marketplace. That brings us to the end of Adobe Experience Makers, brought to you by CNBC TV18. Thank you so much for joining us. CNBC TV 18, Adobe present Experience Makers. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.